quarantine has caused many of us to reconsider our life in so many ways. To name one, our relationship with alcohol. It seems the pandemic narrative has us thinking we must go to one of two extremes. Either drinking more or just quit straight to sobriety. Welcome to Health Talks. I'm Laura Termini, founder of chickenall.com, and my guest today is Dr. Michelle Perman, assistant professor in the Division of Digestive and Liver Diseases at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Dr. Perman, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome to Health Talks. Thank you for having me, Laura. So let's talk about alcohol because I have many questions from readers. So I read and heard people saying things like, okay, dry January, cancel, February, no. Uh, now we're sipping tequila because life is stressful. Another one is life is stressful, so one drink a day is okay. Life is short. We are in the middle of a pandemic. So <laughs> what have you heard from your patients about this topic? Yeah, I think people approach kind of alcohol and food in very similar manners. I think alcohol and food are both tied towards all different sorts of emotions, whether it's depression, anxiety, stress, happiness, sadness, or just plain boredom. And, you know, oftentimes people say, I wish I had more time, I, you know, for this and that. And when COVID came, all of a sudden we had so much time and our routine was just ripped out underneath us. And so we needed to fill that time doing something and unfortunately, alcohol for some people was one of those activities. I have to tell you something, and, and I, I'm very straightforward with my readers and friends on social media. Like, I, I, was, I was drinking a lot during the quarantine. I was like even concerned, like am I probably in trouble? And then, you know, I did all January, dry January, and then I started saying to myself, at the beginning of this month, if I'm gonna have a drink, I'm gonna have it just once a week, like when we were, you know, going out every single weekend. So for me, like, it was like more like type of, okay, I'm disconnected from my from my day, uh, from, from the, the things that we're going through and more like in a, this mental thing that having a drink was going to help me. And then I started having more problems going to sleep early and with my emotions. So it triggers something in me. Yeah, you know, it's, it's very interesting in that, you know, a lot of people when they, let's say, come to my clinic, I ask them about their alcohol intake. A lot of times they say I drink socially, but we live in Miami and people are pretty darn social in Miami. So that's different for everyone. So it used to be, let's say pre-COVID, that people for the most part only drank when they left their house. So when they went out to eat, when they went to a club, things like that around kind of social engagements. And then when everything shut down, they then had to bring that social life right into their home. And so it wasn't like a Friday night where they were going out. It was they were at home all the time. They needed some way to be social and maybe they had you know, like a girls get together on Zoom and maybe that was more than just a Friday night and it was a Monday, Wednesday and Friday type of thing. And so, yeah, their whole routine and, and kind of the social aspect of things went from outside of the home to in the home. And now when they're in the home more often, alcohol was a much larger part of that equation. Like stress drinking, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what are some benefits of giving up alcohol and even if just for a few weeks, I did the whole January and I felt great. And to me it was like, okay, now I don't feel like I have to, I have to drink something yeah. sweet inside of me again. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just depends on kind of who you are, what your goals are and how alcohol affects you. Um, so people often go from one extreme to the next, whether it's related to food or alcohol. It's like they drink a lot and all of a sudden they tell themselves, I just have to cut it off completely. And going from one extreme to the next, I think for many people uh, can lead to, um, you know, only short term results. And then people start having those cravings again. Um, when it comes to alcohol, I think you have to break it down into, okay, was it just, you know, can I get away with just one drink a day? 
which I think is fine. That's moderate considering, you know, whether or not you're male or female uh, based on the guidelines that you look at. If you're female and you have one drink a day, then that's moderate use. And I don't think there's a huge downside to it. Um, but if you go from one drink a day to one bottle a day, that's a whole nother story, you know? So there's a huge difference between moderate drinking and excessive drinking. And that's really what I want to point out today is the difference. Now, depending on the guidelines you look at, um, newer guidelines say it doesn't matter whether you're a female or a male, it should be one drink a day or less um, versus kind of the USDA, which says one drink a day for women and two drinks a day for men. But that doesn't mean that you can binge drink 14 drinks on a Saturday night and say, well, I still had 14 as a man in the week. That's fine because having several drinks at a time is considered you know, excessive drinking. So it just depends on what your goals are. If you feel okay having one glass of wine a day and you're able to you know, be productive at work and have healthy relationships and it's not you know, worsening your sleep, then I think that's fine. Um, but there's again, a huge difference between one glass a day and one bottle a day. Let's talk about alcohol and, and cravings, doctor. What's the connection? So uh, I think part of it has to do with how it affects your brain. It, you know, it stimulates reward centers in your brain that make you crave more. Same thing with food. Um, oftentimes alcohol is linked to other behaviors. So when people have their wine, they also have their cheese and other sorts of kind of treats. Um, so alcohol is usually not by itself. There's always other things kind of paired with that, whether there's, you know, let's say drugs involved or unhealthy eating behaviors. Um, so it really depends on kind of what you're doing while you're drinking. Um, so, sorry, I totally forgot your question. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol, alcohol and cravings. Yes, yes. So it can definitely stimulate cravings because of how it affects the brain. And it also has to do with, you know, what you're eating. And then if you're eating, let's say cake with that, then the cake is going to then stimulate you to crave more sweet stuff. And then you may have another soda with alcohol. So all of these things, whether it's alcohol or whether it's kind of high sugar foods affects the brain that makes you crave even more. And that's why it's a vicious cycle. How, how to maintain then a healthy drinking habit if we can talk about that if we're not you know if we decide to give to give uh some room for for alcohol yeah so it just depends one on the situation if you find yourself that you are drinking alone at home and you're kind of depressed and you're having let's say thoughts of self-harm you know things like that then that's you know i wouldn't recommend drinking because clearly it's not going to help you from the kind of mental perspective but if you're at home with your family you're having dinner or watching a movie and you otherwise feel fine and again the alcohol is not causing negative mental and physical symptoms for you then having a glass of wine again is totally fine i think the data kind of supports that but we really have to there's a there's a, a fine line between moderate and excessive since you try, you know, the you are at the division of digestive and liver diseases. Exactly. You watch documentary about alcohol and the liver. Let's exactly. talk about that aspect of that people can understand. The liver is like the garbage disposal, right? Exactly. It helps detoxify our body. So, you know, for many people, drinking obviously the alcohol is a you know, it, it's a toxin. So our liver is trying to get rid of that toxin and there's only so much the liver can handle. And if you have other medical problems, you know, things like kidney disease or, or already underlying liver disease, then your body can, you know, tolerate even less of the alcohol. Um, and so there are some folks and part of it is genetic where, you know, you can only tolerate so much alcohol. So part of it's genetic. Part of it has to do with what other medical conditions you may have as far as how much alcohol you can handle. But there are some people who are totally fine and they drink, let's say they have a couple drinks one night, they can develop things like acute alcoholic hepatitis or pancreatitis. So you don't have to have a chronic drinking problem to develop some of these more acute issues. And many times you can't predict who's gonna develop those symptoms or not. It just happens. Um, but then you also have issues related to chronic alcohol use. And that would be things like chronic pancreatitis, where your pancreas gets inflamed over a long period of time that it no longer functions correctly. And when we talk about digestive issues, 
your pancreas is very important for digestion and absorption. If it can no longer produce the enzymes that your body needs to break down food and absorb food and make insulin, then it has a lot of complications or ramifications in the long term. And then in liver disease, there are some people who can get away with drinking two drinks a day their whole life and others where one drink a day ends up causing issues with long-term scarring of the liver. Uh, so there, there are big ramifications that can happen with chronic long-term excessive use. Do you think, doctor, the social media is now playing a big role on how we drink? Because I've seen during the quarantine and now that social media people are getting used to spend more time on the phone, like a lot of videos about drinking socially but at home and every day and having fun with the drink. Do you think social media plays a role? I think social media plays a role in everything, for better or worse. You know, there's a lot of information obviously there. There's a lot of, I think, good support and kind of, you know, positive vibes where people can connect with each other that before that didn't exist. Um, so it really just depends kind of what pages and influencers people are following. Obviously, if someone wants to promote, you know, some sort of tequila or vodka, you know, you just have to be careful with that. So my goal um, for patients in the community is just to empower, you know, people to make whatever decision they think is best for them. Everyone's definition of healthy is different. So it's just providing the facts and then it's up to the person to decide, you know, what's going to help them and what's going to work for them. Thank you so much, doctor, for your time. And as I always say, we're here for you. If you want to leave some questions or comments, please comment, follow, and share this video. Thank you so much, doctor. Awesome. Thank you, Laura.